We got a whole lot to discuss in this trade deadline video, so let's start off with the move everybody's waiting for, and of course the reason you solely clicked on this video with Wayne Ellington. Now Wayne's a solid player and all, but let's just be honest here, because he's a solid older shooter but not solid enough to put an extremely deep rotation, there's no reason for me to hold on to him any longer, and like I implied, there's a few teams that could use him in their rotation. The problem there is there isn't many solid teams that could just absorb a guy for $8 million in cap space. But I found a trade that works out pretty good for us. Our former center Luke Cornett is just rotting in the G League for the Bulls for reasons I don't know. Even though we don't have a true tall backup center, I'm not putting Luke over our beloved Taj Gibson just yet. So Chicago, do you guys want Wayne Ellington for Luke in a second rounder? Oh hell no, they want Taj. Hold on, give me a minute. Alright, I'm just going to settle for Luke alone because he's on a cheap two year deal anyways and I guess that's fine too, sure why not. Alright, so on to the actual bigger fish to fry now, so I've officially decided that it's time for Marcus Morse to go. Throughout these episodes, I've went from exactly saying that he'll be a great face-up scorer and a 3 and D guy for us, and well, at least when I play, he's never been any of those things. Thankfully, in terms of his trade value, A, he's still good in simulation, and B, he just had a pretty good game for me last episode. My vision of what I want to do with him is swing him to another team for a player of nearly the same caliber as him since we're a good team ourselves and want to make the playoffs. So one option is Minnesota's Robert Covington. In all honesty, Covington would be pretty easy to get in a trade that would be roughly for Morris for him straight up because, well, he's been playing really bad this season. Like, bad enough that Minnesota went out and traded for an 84-year-old Trevor Reese just to start him over him. Covington's shooting in the 30s from both the overall field and threes, but the reason I want him is for his god-tier defensive stats. He led the league in steals one of these years, and in 2k he's got 90s across the board. His percentages are low, which makes this a bit of a scary deal potentially, but he's still got a low 80s three-point rating, so it'll be a medium risk, medium return type of thing, because he can maybe turn out into a lockdown D plus 40% three type of guy. The trade works out well for Minnesota since they don't seem to like Covington in his three-year $36 million deal anyways. Something I'd like because after missing out on Katie and Kyrie, we're not really trying to rely too much on free agency again just yet. And Morris would slide right into Minnesota's starting power forward position as a good floor space for Cat since he's better than both Bell and Vonley. But one other player that intrigues me a bit more is Orlando's Terrence Ross. Wow, what a coincidence. They're playing each other in this quick game. It's not like I planned out to get clips fast or anything. Now, Ross isn't close to what Covington is defensively, but I feel that he fills more of a need for us offensively since he can actually move with the ball both in and out of his hands. Covington would probably never dribble the ball for us. Ross is just a better overall player in everything offensively, and while we probably have our issue with scoring in the starting unit covered for now with the Rudy Gay acquisition. We still have a bench issue since Neil Aquina just isn't a consistent scorer. Dotson and Knox kind of work more as spot up guys for now, although I do envision Knox's future as more than that. And I mean, Taj Gibson has genuinely been our best bench option for most of the time. Ross is also on a four year, $54 million long term deal at 28 years old, which is good in my eyes. But the thing with Ross is that it'll actually be tougher to get him, he's having a good season, but Orlando is two and a half games back from the 8th seed and we could give up some of our 11 man deep depth for Ross. Now in case you didn't realize, one guy I haven't mentioned at all is Alonzo Trier. We know Trier is similar to Morris has disappointed me kinda, but still plays solid in simulation so his trade value is definitely there. I like to keep players like him in the rotation because, well for one, he's still had an okay impact, but it's for moments like these when his trade value is actually there. He has an 82 potential which makes me a little reluctant to actually trade him, but at the same time Ross is like a taller, prime trader, and I'd rather run a set 10 man rotation with Neil Aquina, Dotson, Ross, Knox, and Gibson off the bench anyways. Even though Alonzo could eventually become maybe even better than Ross if it fills his ISO ZO status in 2k, I just don't know how long that'll take and I'd rather get Ross who pre preserve his value for some time as well. Trading Morris and Trier for Ross works for Orlando because they don't have a good backup shooting guard or power forward, and Trier will probably be their shooting guard of the future, while for us he's honestly going to be behind Dots and NRJ for a while, and he didn't work out at the point guard either as we know. And would you look at that, Orlando offers us Ross in the trade finder for the Trier and Morris package, and they're also trying to give me some guy named Chuma Okiki who I had to watch a magic introductory press conference to find out how to say his name. And his potential is similar to Alonzo, so I said why not, we'll take him. But I added another second round pick originally to make things fair. Eventually I went back and threw them a 2020 first, so I won't feel bad about maybe swinging him in maybe a future bigger trade or maybe giving him a rotational shot. Although that probably won't come this season, or maybe ever, I don't know, we already have a pretty solid small forward and power forward core. Well that's the end of the Knicks tenure for Marcus Morris and Alonzo Trier. 
And I already ranted about Ross for a while, so here's a look at him in his next jersey. I won't be changing his number like I did with Rudy Gay, 16. He originally wore it since that's retired for Steve Novak, so of course I had to. Honestly, I love this move though because we, although we had to give up Trier and his potential, Ross will have a great impact now rather than Morris, who was kind of just there most of the time I play with him. The Cornette trade is cool too because rather than him playing with the Windy City Bulls, he could eventually be on 11th man for us if we really did need the size down low since Knox and Todger are big men both at 6'9 and Cornette is 7'1. We do have two more players to discuss for a minute though and the first is Reggie Bullock. Now if I'm being completely honest, Bullock probably will never get another shot in rotation but unlike the older Ellington, Bullock should just be able to preserve value as just a three-point guy without even getting minutes if we did want to package him in a trade later. He's on a two-year, $8 million deal with a team option, so we'll probably accept the option just use him as a trade asset next season. If not, well, he's just there just in case. And lastly, I'm going to hold on to Alfred Payton. I know he hasn't played for us in like seven years and he could also get back a little bit more than what Ellington did, but if we're just being honest, Frank isn't really a sure shot, so having a 7 77 overall as a backup plan to him is pretty good, just in case we're likely in the playoffs and Frank just starts being really, really, really bad offensively. I mean, in simulation, Frank already is pretty bad offensively, so we might have to make that move sooner than later, and Peyton's lack of a smooth jump shot can be hidden since Terrence Ross exists now, and I wouldn't have to try to create anything for Peyton. Maybe he could get some wide open shots if Ross attracts a ton of defenders to him in different plays, who knows, but I'm kind of going too far already with that, he's not even in the rotation yet. We're officially past the trade deadline now though, stick around for the Terrence Ross's debut against whatever team I decide to play after a few more weeks of simulation. Shout out to Carmelo Anthony because he got a contract with the Sixers and I definitely thought about signing him for a little bit. Shout out D'Angelo Russell because a lot of people wanted me to trade for him but I just couldn't because he's playing too good with the Warriors, he's leading them in assists and all that and it wouldn't have been realistic and shout out to us for not having any, any all-stars but it's not like it really matters because we were in the playoff race anyways and that's all I've got. Cut.